Are you feeling spooky yet? <laughs> Well, in case you're not, we're gonna work on the next prompts and we're gonna theme them all around Halloween. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm reaching for my Artex acrylic markers because I think they're gonna be perfect for this next prompt, which is create resistance. Draw something heavy on top of something light. Unfortunately, the sketch completely gives away this idea, so you probably know what we're gonna be drawing today. Rubbing out those pencil lines and grabbing a couple of transfer sheets because we're gonna be painting directly in this book, and I have no clue whether it's gonna go through the page or not. We're starting with the base layer. First things first, we just need to cover the entire page with colour. Then we can build upon it with more layers. I find this the hardest part to trust the process because for a long while it's literally just coloured blobs on a page. Since we're using acrylic markers these are pretty opaque so there's not really any point in putting down some fine liner or something first for the line work. But how did we get here? Well, the first thought that popped in my head when I saw this prompt was actually a kind of dumb idea. It was like a farm full of farm animals and there was a sheep holding a bigger heavier animal like a cow or something which is probably the dumbest idea I've ever had. After that I did some planning and worked out that this prompt would actually be Halloween themed because of the timing so I thought what is scary? What did I find scary as a child? I mean obviously not terrifying because we're trying to create family friendly art here and not a horror film because we do that in the scene series. So I fought back to playing New Super Mario Bros on the Nintendo DS. Do you remember all the maps with the ghosts in? Where you're trapped somewhere and the ghosts are chasing you and every door goes to a completely different place that's random. And it's really scary as a child because I was always the worst at those levels. But you know how those games are, you just have to keep going until you complete it to keep the game moving. Which meant I had to spend weeks trying to complete these terrifying levels. I then played Mario cart on the Wii U many years later and it all came back to me. Driving through Luigi's mansion with the ghosts flying everywhere. So this is what I thought of. It's an iconic map in Mario Kart, though I haven't actually played the Luigi's Mansion game. These ghosts aren't as scary in Mario Kart because they don't really do a lot. It's not like the DS game where they chase you the entire time. So I'm having to make them a bit scarier. And how would these ghosts be scarier in Mario Kart? Well, imagine if they held up items and threw them at you. Like you're just driving along and they lob a random red shell at you or a blue shell just comes out of nowhere. Now that's a lot scarier. We have a red and blue shell of course and the third one I really just chose because I'd imagine it's probably the heaviest of the lot. Something like a banana or mushroom might not actually be heavier than these ghosts. Right? Now that a lot of the base colour is down, we can work on adding in some of those details. It's important that the faces are correct so that they are easily recognisable. Because honestly, otherwise the entire piece falls apart. It wouldn't make any sense. Luckily, I think I drew the faces well. They don't make any sense. The eyelid kind of goes the opposite way, so I'm glad I followed a reference because I would have gotten those eyes completely wrong if I just used my imagination. This is looking okay, but we need some lines. We need some texture. Grabbing the colour pencils to add some subtle line work. And this was the plan all along. Well, actually, at the beginning, I was intending to use gouache for this page with colour pencils, but then these markers arrived and I saw just how easy they were to use. So we're giving these a go instead. The colour pencil is working well on top, but it kind of seems Seems like only the darker shades are showing. I'm using lighter shades to try and create some wood texture. 
texture since the majority of this scene is wood, like the entire mansion is made of wood. Colour pencil is usually pretty good at creating wood texture easily because it has this kind of scratchy look anyway, if you use it gently. I don't really know if you can see much of it though, especially the patterning on that green carpet. That's hard to see. I do love that mint green shade though. I don't think it's accurate, but in this recreation, it matches the rest of the colours. And I love that this spread looks a little bit more pastel. Finally, reaching for a metallic gel pen just to add a little extra something. And with this page complete, we're moving on to the second prompt. Create an I Spy page. Hide different items in a chaotic scene. Include an I Spy search. I'm gonna be honest, there's only one thing I thought of, and it's Where's Wally? Or Where's Waldo if you're in the United States. I sketched this incredibly detailed scene full of various blobs, and now I'm scared. We need to go in with pan and turn all these little blobs into people. And this really isn't the way that I tend to create. My art style is generally loose and flowy and quick. I create art quite fast. That's why I love watercolour. And this isn't that. We're drawing every single individual person on this street because it's Halloween night and everyone's out trick-or-treating. Some characters are easier to draw than others. You'll see a lot of people dressed up as ghosts because all I had to draw was a sheet with eyes. That is by far the easiest. After that, there's witches. Pointy hat and long gown, maybe the odd broom. Perfect, no legs. Then I really struggled to figure out what people actually dress up as. In the UK, we only really dress up as scary things for Halloween. In my whole life, I've been a witch, a devil, and kind of dead zombie thing in my school uniform. So I don't have a lot of experience to base this on. There's some mummies, cats and dogs, angels and devils. I honestly couldn't think of other scary things. We're making the I Spy search key now and starting off with a huge mistake. Can you believe I drew my own character wrong? I drew Ares with the horns facing the wrong way and then had to fill in the horns to try and change the shape. It's tragic. And the worst part is Ares is already on this page. I've already drawn her correctly. This is what happens when I try and use my limited amount imagination. So you might be able to tell in this Where's Wally inspired page, I've hidden all of the characters we've created so far inspired by star signs. We planned every character together and created each of their backstories in this series and we've still got a lot to go. The playlist is down below so you can find out more about these characters we're looking for and this is actually a sneak peek of Scorpio. You've not met Scorpio yet but I've already created them and they are on this page. Just like that, we're ready to get started. Well, I'm not. I'm terrified, but let's do this anyway. First up, we need to fill in the background. We're using watercolor with fine liners. I thought this would be the easiest method since now all we really need to do is fill in those gaps. Though before that, we need to avoid every single gap to paint in the background. This part took a lot longer than expected and those houses are slightly weird colors. I probably should have picked some actual nice colors rather than just trying to go for brick. Painting in those trees and paths has really made this piece come together. There's a few details in the houses that we still need to add, like the doors and curtains, the background in each room, and the fences between the houses. But let's just ignore the fact that my entire nail polish is now falling off. It gets to a point where my nails just decide no, and then it goes. I hope it's not too distracting. We need to colour in every single person, but it's not that simple because they have skin, as one does, plus hair, maybe a top and bottoms, maybe a hat or trick-or-treat bag. And since we're using watercolour, that's like at least three separate layers per person. If we don't want the paint to spread everywhere into one big mess, so I'm sure you can imagine this took a while. 
There was a technique though, paint a skin tone on one of my characters, then add that to a lot of people, then the next skin tone and so on. But of course that then had to be done for the hair and clothes too. Saying that, I think it was pretty smooth. The plan kind of worked. Every single one of these blobs has different enough colours. I will say though, I really had to manage my expectations for this piece. Like, this isn't an original painting, it's a prompt for a prompt book, and I only have a few hours aside. Coincidentally, this is the longest prompt so far, and I did it as quick as possible. If I wanted to do this painting well, it could have easily taken weeks. And we don't have weeks. The sketches resemble people, just. And the paint blobs are very blobby. They're not super accurate, but we're working with the time that we have. And we filled every single person now, except for this strange little person right in the middle. How did I miss this person directly in the middle of the page? I miss them completely. I really don't know. But let's keep coloring in the hair and clothes until every single person is done. And let me tell you, I checked this over at least 20 times because I kept missing people. It was really difficult. Time for the scariest part out of this entire Halloween episode. We need to slice the art in half and I'm now realizing that we need to have the prompt shine through somehow. We're cutting an awful circle so the prompt can be seen and gluing that in, turning it into an eye of sorts. I don't know, it didn't work. There's a photo on Instagram and Pinterest of this page up close so you can try and spot each character yourself. I'm super happy with how these Halloween themed prompts have turned out, don't they look so cool? If you want to see more Create This Book content, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe. Feel free to check out the playlist down below if you've missed any. Have a great Halloween and I'll see you on Thursday for Peachtober. Bye bye!